Game day, so we got Bag Milk, Oilers Nation on with us. Lots to talk about. Should we jump in to the Lucic hit, Grant? Yeah, uh, there's going to be no suspension for Lucic. Thankfully, he'll be playing tonight for the Flames. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I looked at it. I mean, like, I didn't want Lucic out of the lineup. And I, to be to be honest, as I looked at the replay over and over again, and again yesterday, yeah, I didn't think it was necessarily going to be a suspension of any kind. No, Plus, no. Lucic can't skate or turn that fast, so there was no other option but to run into Mike Smith. That's what I thought. In the heat of the moment, I was like, Lucic, you're garbage. But then you look at it, and you're like, okay, he can't really turn on skates. <laughs> And well, if, both of those things are true. So Lucic <laughs> still is garbage, but he also can't uh, can't turn. So that was a big problem. It's also, it's also not wrong what he said, where he's like, if I was going to charge Mike Smith, we both wouldn't be playing the next game, <laughs> right? Like, well, he, that's just it. Yeah. He's, like, he's like Bowser from Mario Kart. Exactly. Once the big guy gets going. He's yeah, he skates down. like a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> he's not really light on his toes, eh? There's a no, lot of weight no. in his shoulders yeah. and head. <laughs> um, how did you feel about? about Mike Smith coming back after the uh, concussion protocol session? Well, I think that, like, as I was watching the game, obviously the first thing is, oh, man, did he get hurt in there? But then you see him, he's just kind of, like, trying to fight his way to make sure that nobody falls on him in the pile. So then as he was standing up and they had the cameras on him, he's like, no, 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 he's trying to wave them off. So as soon as they were, like, pointing at him to go, I was like, oh, concussion protocol, this yeah. somebody pulled him. So... I wasn't surprised that he went back in. I mean, like, he's the kind of guy who's intensely fiery. He's supremely combat or, uh, competitive. So if he's fine, if he's not hurt in any way, why wouldn't he want to get back in the deck? Yeah, actually, I thought it was a good move by Woodcroft, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, and it was also funny, too, that he took a timeout and then Mike Smith comes out, like, wrestling style. That yeah, was also yeah. very funny. It was like Stone Cold coming back to the ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 My yeah. God. <laughs> we should set up tonight's game uh, it, this series it's a difficult one to predict um based on the three games we've seen i mean outside of mcdavid's gonna dominate again um i said it last hour i hope they don't hurt mcdavid because i think that's the last thing that they have like the only thing they can do now is just try to kill him right like what, I, i'm worried about that too because like yeah. if you looked at some shifts last uh like uh, Dustin Nielsen from TSN 1260 a little while ago tweeted a video of Flames hacking at Leon Dreisaitl's ankle on the power play. So they're dirty. They're probably going to end up there. So I'm 100% with you, Locke. My yeah. biggest concern is that they're going to try and do something dumb because there's no other way they can stop him. He is absolutely running their show right now. So I'm also really concerned about that. This is a dirty team. But hopefully the power play can get going here, and that's just going to keep them out of the box, or else they're going to just get absolutely yeah, carved up good. tonight. That's good. Yeah. Carol Sutter said after Game Three that some of his guys were rattled by the atmosphere at Rogers Place, and you know it's going to be just as bumping in there tonight. Well, that's because bagged milk's going to be in the house. That's right. I am <laughs> going to be there. I'm <laughs> going you. to have zero voice tomorrow. I guarantee you that. Good for you, brother. <laughs> the thing about this series that um, that's intriguing for me is. What McDavid has done to the rest of this team, I think most Oiler fans, I mean, there's the hardcore, highly delusional Oilers fans. Every franchise has them. And no matter what, um, this team is going to the cup. Like, plan the parade. But I think most Oiler fans were like, okay, listen, we should get by the Kings. We're going to have some trouble with the Flames. It'll probably go seven, flip a coin, and, and you know, I, I want to see the order, but this, this Flames team is a good team. What I've seen, especially the last two games, is they've got a sniffer on this thing now. You can tell that not just McDavid, but I think McDavid's the reason why, but they all now, like how many times did we see Oilers, not McDavid, in behind the defense. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's why I thought it was so funny in their post game uh, after game three, where there was a bunch of flames saying, "Oh, well, one guy's beating us, this yeah. is one man no. team." And like, I found that funny because Drysidel poke... set a record for most assists in a period, and like yes, Evander Kane had a hat trick. It's not just McDavid. So, yeah. Why poke the bear like that? You'd have to think that I hundred. I'm I'm with you, Locke, two thousand percent. There. Connor is leading by example and yeah. everyone else is buying it. 
Like it's what they're doing right now is they're playing inspired hockey. They're playing for each other. Mm -hmm. They're battling, they're hitting, they're playing with speed. And I think that all comes from McDavid's lead. So I think that having the flames say it's only a one man team is just going to motivate the rest of the crew. Cause you know, McDavid doesn't need the motivation. That guy's on a different planet right now. And when did Hyman become the second fastest player in the league? <laughs> like, Oh my God. And he, he is was... relentless. Yeah. Too. Like his, yeah. his motor just does not stop. His relentlessness on the puck has been a lot of fun to watch. If only he had been able to get into the second round in Toronto, they could have seen what this guy is actually about because he's been scoring some time. Timely goals. He's yeah. killing penalties. He looks like there is no quit in this guy. I absolutely love him. He's the kind of player that this city especially absolutely adores. And it's yeah. no oh, yeah. surprise to me that everyone's falling in love with him. I like quiet too. I like, you know what? He just sort of it's a big smile on his face. And, yeah. Does yeah. what he does on the ice. Looks like he's having fun. And my guy endlessly positive, probably write a kid's book about it. I love everything about <laughs> it. The story's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, listen, thank you for doing this. And again, we'll have you on every game day. So we'll hear from you in the next couple of days again but where's Oilers Nation uh, where are they going to be tonight for game four game four viewing party tonight at the pint on white nice. it is going to be packed so check out our social media if you want to reserve a table because we have been selling these things out very quickly that's our man right there bag milk from Oilers Nation go Oilers Oil. have a good one thanks boys the locker room brought to you by always plumbing and heating weekday mornings on 95.7 cruise fm